Greetings to ATVers everywhere. I'm John VK5KG and in the next 10 minutes or so I'd like to present to you a thumbnail sketch of ATV activity here in South Australia at the end of 1990. You may be aware the South Australian Amateur Television Group has been in existence since the mid-1960s when George Usher, then VK5ZEY, staged several increasingly ambitious ATV displays show. This culminated in the first of amateur colour TV in Australia almost 10 years before broadcasting commenced. stations in Adelaide rapidly expanded and now let's look at VK5 RTV as it appeared after 10 years of successful operation. First of all, we see the control racks. Over the last 10 years or so, Bill Simister VK5 KTV has been instrumental in designing and building most of the RF components for VK5 RTV and we owe a very great debt of gratitude to him for the many hours he's donated to the group in many ways. This current transmitter was designed and built by Bill and as a spin-off to his activities many ATVers both here and interstate got their start in ATV using transmitter components he designed and manufactured. Since officially retiring Bill, seen here in brown, and Richard Carden, VK4XRL in white, have together furthered the design of television transmitters both for amateur and professional applications. In the early 1980s, a second ATV repeater, VK5RCN, was licensed to serve the mid-north country areas of South Australia. Because of its distance from mains electricity, it uses only wind and solar energy for its power source and serves a group of about a half a dozen widely separated ATVs. The repeater itself is built inside a water tank turned on its side. This is the control equipment. And this is the RF side, both receiver and transmitter. And this is looking inside the control box. As you can see, it's far from simple because it's got video switches and uh, identification generators, etc. Another landmark for Australian Another ATV was reached in the mid-80s when the South Australian, Australian ATV Group was the first in Australia to be granted permission to crosslink 
two ATV repeaters. During favourable propagation conditions, this proved a technical success. However, because it tied up both 70 centimetre ATV channels in Adelaide, it was not universally applauded. So the ability to cross-link was dropped during a recent computer upgrade to add a packet radio control port to VK5RTV. VK5RCN retains the ability to look in on what's happening in Adelaide, and this is appreciated by mid-northern ATVers who are otherwise fairly isolated. Isolated. Over the years, there have been problems serving the area south of the Adelaide ATV repeater due mainly to the hilly terrain in its southern takeoff. In an effort to try and overcome these problems, a third South Australian ATV repeater, VK5RWH, was licensed several years ago. This was to be situated on Willunga Hill. Again, new ground was broken as this was the first Australian ATV repeater to have its prime output on the 23 centimetre band, namely on 1246.25 megahertz. But enough of group activities. What do individual ATVers in South Australia like to transmit? Well, the relatively recent easy access to domestic cameras and recorders has really enabled ATVers to myself have undertaken several outside broadcasts from time to time, including this live telecast of the Adelaide Christmas pageant. Actually, you guys at home are probably seeing it better than I am. I'm seeing it in black and white running across. Fair enough. A couple of minutes. I can't hear the television. We recently uh, saw. We recently uh, saw as a matter of fact uh, a demonstration as of on matter of fact last night. One of commercial on uh, of this one of commercial stations of, of this system of three dimensional type of system of three dimensional free television. We use method of free vision viewing method of I, uh, looking viewing. at the picture directly I, uh, looking at the picture directly to the on and relatively close and to the screen on it and, and concentrating on it to float and the towing your eyes slightly in to float the you, two images uh, together see the three d you uh, you can see the three finally and to wrap up here are a few quick clips of current ATV operators from South Australia hey, this is VK5 BJE and uh, my name is John. I've been an amateur radio operator for about 14 years and I've been playing ATV for about 11. Have a mic. Okay, for ATW, your name's Trevor. Located uh, at uh, North Clinton near the airport. As a minute, fairly crude, fairly old. Uh, does a reasonable job as you can see. VK5ZR, handle is Ron. I'm a retired gentleman, <laughs> ex-ABC technician. 
Oh, a little bit long in the tooth, gentlemen. <laughs> this is a VK5GL. That's not my train, but it's one of our old engines. Um, VK5GL, just to uh, show you who it is. A shack, and I'll show you me. There we are. I took my hat off, because I usually wear a hat in that shack. Just a minute. Name here is Trevor. Watching the, uh, the antenna swing round, I'm, I'm situated at Morford Vale, uh, somewhere around 12 to 14 kilometres south of the repeater. And uh, it's best to, uh, yeah, that's that's about the place. There we go. Let's board it up a little bit. Um, and went without his hat, but I don't go without mine. I, I'm, I put my cap on. This is uh, BK5ZBO, and uh, Norm is the name. And uh, oh, about five miles from GBO, about three from the transmitter, and uh, quite a good uh, location, really. Uh, this is VK5ZFD. My name is Frank. I'm a newcomer to the ATV group. I'm a uh, member of the ATV group for uh, three and a half years and uh, roughly transmitting got my license back this year. That's myself. Uh, I'm a retired too. I'm an invalid pensioner. And that's become my hobby now. Well, unfortunately, that's all the time we've got in this quick little thumbnail sketch of ATV activity in South Australia. Before I go, though, I'd just like to remind you that uh, I am the uh, WIA Federal Videotape Coordinator and uh, that's some of the master tapes in the videotape library. If you want to know how you can avail yourself of the services provided by the WIA uh, in its videotape library, the details are in the February 1990 issue of Amateur Radio magazine. This program was edited entirely on domestic level VHS video cassette recording equipment.